Hello everyone, today in our series of Doc Flix's Cable Interviews, we have with us Dr. Avinash Supe. Dr. Supe completed his graduation from KEM before going to University of Illinois for Masters in Health Professional Education. His work as the Head of Surgical Gastroenterology of KEM from 2003 to 2013. He is currently appointed as the Dean of KEM Hospital and he has won many awards and accolades. He has won a total of 26 awards and has written 247 research papers. In this interview, Dr. Avinash Supe will discuss gastrointestinal surgical practices. Thank you, Dr. Supe, for joining us today. Yes. So, in your opinion, what preoperative management strategy is involved while performing gastrointestinal endoscopy? I think uh, endoscopy is usually the upper GI endoscopy. You require only about uh, six hours of uh, starving, especially, and sometimes overnight starving if the patient is obstructed. If the patient is obstructed, you would like to sometimes, very rarely, would like to put a rice food and give a wash. But otherwise, uh, this is more than enough, because that usually a sedation, light sedation can be really used for that. When it's a lower GI scopy, like say colonoscopy, uh, it requires much uh, more preparation. I mean, uh, the patient, the best uh, kind of preparation is usually the light diet and uh, roughage free diet for about one or two days with liquids on a last day. Probably give the best preparation. Um, usually, we nowadays only give a laxative, a small laxative. And if the patient has some degree of an uh, loaded or kind of a colon, then we give egg leg. And that is uh, some kind of an uh, DEG, one and a half two bottles depending on the weight of the patient in the morning and that really empties uh, the uh, bowel and it gives usually a clean kind of a bowel. Uh, colonic uh, enemas or high total gut irrigated bowels nowadays not really So uh, what are the complications associated with gastrointestinal surgery in obese patients and are there any recent procedures to manage the same? Uh, obesity has always been a risk factor for all kind of complications because it is always said that the obesity is surgeon's enemy, mm -hmm. fat is surgeon's enemy, mm -hmm. especially for dissection, for anastomosis. Mm -hmm. If you take like an operation like people's or pancreatoidenectomy, the anastomotic leaks are very, and dissection is of course known to have higher into obese patients. Any kind of a surgery where anastomosis is mm -hmm. involved, or uh, you will always find more kind of complications. Uh, the superficial bone complications are always uh, more than that. Uh, of course, recently we do laparoscopically, therefore the bone complications are very less with that. But however, when it comes to the anastomosis, it's always uh, uh, the risk is a little higher. But I think people have been trying to get adjusted because now we get a lot of obese patients mm. to operate. The recent procedures for the prevention of obesity complications have been just to be a little more careful, but in obesity there are a lot of new surgeries that come, like uh, gastric bypass and gastrectomy. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Avinash, how to decide between polycytomy and uh, colocytomy surgeries for colorectal cancer? Polypectomy and colectomy. Yeah. These are the two uh, kind of things. See, normally we have, sometimes patients get a lot of polyps. Mm -hmm. And as the age grows, the polyps increase in the size. Now, usually if the polyp is single and it is not causing any problem, it can be kept alone. But if you find it is there, it can be removed polypectomy by filling mm -hmm. colonoscopy. But if it's a familial polyposis, usually, or if there is a possibility of it turn, turning into malignancy, especially if it's a sessile polyp, multiple mm -hmm. polyps in one area, then definitely a colectomy, whether it's a local or total colectomy is preferred. Especially those uh, familial disorders, usually you prefer the total collection. So, what are the likely chances of reoccurrence of a colon cancer uh, following a colorectal surgery? And what are the risk factors associated with complications in the surgery? Uh, colon cancer has always a risk of recurrence depending on the stage of the disease. Uh, if the disease is only restricted to the colon, the chances mm -hmm. of colonic cancer recurrence are less. But if it's a local regional cancer, that means it has gone into the 
misentry or to the cirrhosis. Then it will always find that uh, about this 40 percent at the end of five years, and almost 98 percent of the patients will get it by five years. That means almost uh, half of the patients will get uh, colonic recurrence. And however, nowadays people aggressively treat even recurrences, and they operate them, treat them, and even if there's a liver metastasis, they will definitely like to treat them with the newer therapies which have really come. The risk factors is that whenever there is an advanced local regional disease, that means if the disease has gone to the cirrhosis, if the mesentery is involved, if there are more than 12 nodes sent to the, you know, the chances that it always get up. You know, obesity is also one of the risk factors. And the kind of surgery you do is also matters. If you do a proper circumferential margins are negative, then we should the chances. Yes. So, can you please explain about the various prognostic factors responsible for corrosive esophageal fractures? Corrosive uh, depends upon many factors. It's what substrate they have really taken. It's alkaline or acid. I mean, alkaline has more worse prognosis, definitely. The most important is uh, at what time patient has come to you and what type of a stricture is there and this grade of a stricture and stage of the stricture. If there are uh, multiple strictures, oblique fracts, then of course it has got the worst prognosis. More important is that higher strictures, which are related to the pharyngeal esophageal and the upper, always has uh, higher uh, incidence of recurrences and they are the most difficult to treat. If it's a lower stricture, small segment strictures, then usually they are easy to treat. And if you are to replace the whole esophagus, it is easy. But when it's a pharyngeal esophageal, Many times it requires a tracheos from you, and then that is the reason why the prognosis. So, since you are an active member at DocPlexus, is there any key message that you would like to share with other members of DocPlexus? I think DocPlexus is a very good kind of an insight, and I continue to come across that. I read their blogs, and I think sometimes it's a good thought process to be initiated. I think people should actively contribute, and it should make it more evidence based, I'm sure people will come. Thank you so much for your kind words on this interview. Sure. To stay updated on our latest scale videos and interviews, please follow us on Twitter, like us on our Facebook page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy Doc Flexing!